Hello and welcome to Ginny's Gin Livestream. I'm Ginny and along with my husband Rob and our dear friends and partners in the business, Jeff and Amy Close, we started Ginny's Gin a few years back. Um, we here in Sonoma County, Northern California, we are very happy, excited to see the rain. Um, we definitely need it and uh, Yes, it's nice to have a little chill in the air and obviously we're going into the next season, so uh, we, we really needed the rain, so fantastic. Um, so pears are still in season. I was driving past a, um, a friend's um, orchard and they still have the last of the pears. Rob is getting ready for his cocktail, as you can hear. <laughs> He's expressing. So um, I was driving past and I saw the pears and I'm like, okay, pears. Um, let's do, as you know, um, we really enjoy doing using seasonal fruit um, and herbs and what have you uh, for our cocktails, so they're super fresh. Um, so I decided to look up pear in the Flavor Bible, and I think we've told you about this before. So the Flavor Bible, it tells you what goes with what, basically. You know, there are certain flavor affinities that, that work really well. Um, so I looked at pear, and the one that caught my eye was pear plus honey plus rosemary. Well, we've got plenty of rosemary in the garden, and some friends supplied us with pears, so off I went. So what I've done is I have took the pear, and there's two ways you can do this. You can make a pear and rosemary simple syrup. So just a little saucepan, I took half a cup of, uh, in fact, instead of doing a simple syrup with like a sugar, um, I used a honey, so it's a honey syrup. So I put, um, I chopped up the pear and threw it in with a half a cup of honey and half a cup of hot water. And then I threw in a couple of sprigs of rosemary and let that come to a boil, make sure that the, um, sugar, uh, the honey is all dissolved. Um, and then I just took it off the heat after it had boiled and let it rest for, um, for about 30 minutes. Um, and then once it's cooled, I then transfer it into a container and keep it in the fridge. And those will keep, you know, for a couple of weeks. The other thing you can do if you wanted to use pear in your cocktail is you could actually, um, you could just boil it up and make it so that it's nice and um, soft. Um, maybe put a little bit of um, honey and lemon into that. Um, and then just throw it into a liquidizer and just make a nice sort of puree, a pear puree, if you, if you like. So I went the honey syrup route, but you know, you could do it another way as well. So this is a really simple cocktail. Um, it's a really, it's a gin and tonic, but it's got this take on the pear and the rosemary, which is kind of fun. And it's, it's definitely the fall sort of, uh, it's got a fall feeling, so. Um, okay, so here's my glass. Um, and rather than shaking it up, I'm just going to put ice in a mixing glass and we're going to do it in a mixing glass and just stir it to make it cold. So two ounces of gin is gin. Oh, and by the way, um, shout out to Jess, who is in um, Sonoma County here in Santa Rosa. Uh, he and I were both in the uh, liquor, wine and spirit section of Oliver's. And uh, he was looking and I was looking and he pointed to a potato vodka, potato vodka. He's like, that's really good. So of course I couldn't not say anything. I said, okay, great, I'll try it. And I said, but you really need to try this. This is gin is gin. So obviously we had a little conversation and he bought a bottle and um, he sent me an email to say, thank you so much for the recommendation. Um, he said he tried it um, just, you know, over ice, um, just a, a shot over ice. He said, super, super smooth, awesome finish. Um, my new favorite drink. So thank you, Jess, that's awesome. Um, and then, you know, the holidays are coming up, so if you have a chance, you can either go into a store locally here in Northern California or Southern California. Um, if they don't carry it, then please ask for it. Um, and if not, you can actually go to, go on the website, and there's a number of places where they, um, like Gary's in Napa, for instance, or Willoughby's here in Santa Rosa. You can go onto the website, you can order it, and they will ship it to you. So, in time for the holidays. Okay, so we're gonna start off with two ounces of Ginny's Gin. Nice and cold into the mixing glass. There we go. Yeah, we're all in our winter clothes now. It's kind of good. It feels good. And if we have rain here, that means there's snow in the mountains, right? Okay. Um, gin, and then I'm going to do a half ounce of lemon. And these are nice Maya lemons. 
then citrus is going to come into its own, obviously, this winter. Um, there we go. There's the, there it is. So half an ounce of fresh and squeezed a lemon juice. Let's see here. Da, da, da. And there is the lemon. Okay. Voila. Half an ounce of lemon. And then half an ounce of the pear rosemary simple syrup. So it smells really good. Um, it's really got the pear flavour and then the, the hint of rosemary as well. So half an ounce of that. There we go. Into the mixing glass. And then I'm just going to throw some ice in and give it a good stir. Two. You could shake this if you want to. Um, but I'm going to stir this one. Nice and cold. Hello, Brenda. Ooh, all right, so that should be nice and cold now. And so I'm going to take, you know, just take one of your favorite glasses um, and you can just throw some ice cubes in. But I love with this particular glass, I've got a little rosemary in there. With this particular glass, I really enjoy this big, round, spherical um, ice cube. And it looks really good in here. So that's what I'm going to use. And you can buy these molds, obviously, online. I mean, you know, um, you just do spherical ice cubes or, you know, fancy ice cubes, and that will come up. So there it is. Pretty ice cube. And I am going to strain it into here. So gin, lemon, and rosemary hair, simple syrup. Okay, now this is a gin and tonic. It's a fancy gin and tonic. So I'm just going to top it off with tonic water. Um, hopefully you have tonic water in the pantry. There we go. So, a little bit of tonic water. Here it is. There we go. And just give it a little stir. I'm actually going to stir it with the garnish, which is, there they are a sprig of rosemary from the garden. And then I am gonna throw in a little bit of pear slice, which looks pretty. Let's do one and two and three. Actually, let's do this now. Okay. So this is what should we call this one? Um, nice pear, gin is gin and tonic. And there we go. Roberto, it is time for you to come and do, so Rob is gonna do some coffee cocktails, which right now, you know, with the weather being it is, and it's gonna be a good pick me up. So he's got two coffee cocktails. Um, our dear friend, Scott Burr, has a fabulous um, coffee farm in Kona which we have visited um, and uh, it, it's stunning. And he, does, he makes this incredible handcrafted co uh, coffee and Rob's gonna tell you a little bit more about that. Um, so thank you to Scott for providing the coffee, which is awesome. Hi everybody, happy Friday. If, with this kind of rainy, gloomy weather, coffee drink sounds good even though they're both cold. Um, so yeah, Carta Coffee with a C. If anybody, you know, they're expensive, but that's because it's the very best. And um, I drink coffee every day and I've, and I've had a, like a lot of really good coffees in my life. But um, by far the best coffee I've ever had are, are Scott's coffee. So it's really cool. Um, looks like that. And this is one of his, he does different roasts and different, um, you know, level blends. But um, I used Artist Series, which is not this one today. But um, anyway, that's Scott's coffee. It's super awesome. So I, last night I made, um, a jar of cold brew so it's it's basically um you do a seven to one ratio which is like you can do seven cups of um water and one cup of coffee grounds but um if you measure it it's, it's better so you do 700 uh, milliliters of water along with 100 grams of coffee 
um, and then you just soak it overnight in a, in a, in a jar or a glass. And then um, the next day after you strain that and then run it through a coffee filter, you know, you've got your cold brew and then it's a two to one ratio when you use it. So then you dilute it by half with water and you end up with about, I don't know, about eight or 900 mLs by the time you're done. And so the first one I'm gonna do is kind of fun. It's a nitrous, um, we call it uh, Jenny's Nitrous <laughs> Cold Brew Cocktail. Yeah, and so um, basically I've already loaded everything into my uh, whipper and I'm gonna use um, nitrous uh, chargers. So I've already charged one charge into it. The reason that I did it before we're on today is because you have to mix the cocktail into the, into the um, metal jar and then put it in the freezer for about a half hour. And I started with you know frozen temperature uh, vodka and, and really cold cold brew and a little bit of simple syrup. And so the amount I added was um, three ounces of the cold brew coffee, three and a half ounces of gin, one ounce of simple syrup, um, and then two drops of saline solution, and that's it. And so I've already put one charger in and then I've emptied it. And so then we're just gonna add the second one. And that's it, it's just like, this is the same charger you use for whipped cream. And we're just going to whip up our uh, our coffee drink. So and it's going to be really... Oh, could you, my, could yeah. you grab my... Well, if they don't have that home, they can't make this. But a lot of people do have these. And if you don't have one, you really should. Because you can make so much... If you go on the ISI uh, whip website, there's so many cool recipes and foams you can make if you like to cook. There's foams, there's infusions, there's... You can infuse things like ginger into your gin or vodka this way. So it's, it's, it's a super cool tool to have and they're not very expensive. So anyway, so then now we're just gonna like, and the reason you want it super cold is, is that the, just like CO2, the nitrous also will, more will go into the drink and it will hold more at a lower temperature. So that's, and it also tastes super good when it's super cold. So I'm just gonna let the gas out. And that's, this, they have different attachments. This one that kind of curves like this lets you kind of get it out without losing too much. Um, liquid, hopefully. So, coming out. <laughs> yeah. But if you, you don't want to open it like before you degas it, because then that could be pretty messy. You'd end up with coffee drink on the ceiling. And that's just about it. If you go too fast, it'll, it'll just, yeah, it'll go all over the place. Like opening up a pressure cooker. Okay, so that's it. So then. The idea now is, and, and this is, I'm telling you, man, it tastes really, really good. We've made this once before and said, wow, we really got to show everybody this one. Um, so then in your chilled champagne flute, and then, you know, just like champagne, you want to keep as many bubbles in there as possible. So that's why you tilt the glass and that's why you pour really, really slow so that you don't degas it very much. So there it is. It looks like coffee champagne, but um, <laughs> this is nitrous cold brew Jenny's gin. Woohoo! Yeah. Awesome. Oh, wow. Not even going to wait till the end, huh? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> I like my own cooking, too, which is kind of funny. Yeah. Okay, so the second one is something that we did at the very beginning, um, like in the first couple of weeks when we did these on Instagram. Um, but we thought we'd revisit it because we hadn't done it on Facebook, and mm -hmm. now that more people are kind of hip onto it, we'll we'll um, we'll whip this one up. So basically, we're just gonna take a mixing tin. We're gonna go with um, two ounces of the cold brew coffee, and I, I put it in a little squirt bottle because it's super hard to pour. I have a big mason's jar, which is what I have the cold brew in. And then we're also going to go, so two ounces of the coffee and two ounces of the fabulous gin. See how I pour the two ounces? It's like two and a hair more. And then um, for that much, one um, ounce of um, simple syrup. And it's a one-to-one, -one, you know, one cup of sugar, one cup of water, kind of a simple syrup. And then, Three ice cubes. I, 
you can put just a tiny pinch of salt or you could put two drops of 20% saline. And then and then we have our <clears throat> martini glass. And I brought our strainer somewhere here. Burning days. Mm -hmm. I could be doing two. I fell off of our son's hoverboard trying to show a friend how easy they are to use when we were in Tahoe. And I really, really hurt my wrist about four or five years ago. And it bothered me for about a year. And then just today with the cold weather, it felt, it still feels, it's heck of sore. So. Stick to cooking and making cocktails. Yeah, huh? Shaking helps. But anyway, so here is the chicken, 100% Kona coffee from Carta. Yep. Jenny's Gin. And look how frothy that is. Coffee really does have some frothing abilities. That's awesome. Um, and there it is right there. That's the. Yeah. Do you coffee, have a favorite? Which one do you prefer? Coffee gin quarantini. Well, I mean, I like this better, but that's pretty fun because it's carbonated yeah. and it has the nitrous, which... But now it's bubbling. I yeah, it's, you can it's, see it's kind of bubbling like, like champagne would. Yeah, so. no, fantastic. They're both good. Yep. And we're getting towards the holidays now, so we'll have some holiday cocktails for you. Um, oh. Obviously, Thanksgiving coming up And a coffee well. bean oh, there you on go. that one, right yeah. on top. And yeah. it floats, which looks really cool. Definitely. Awesome. So, yeah, we'll have some holiday cocktails for you all through the next, you know, month or so. And uh, we'll just keep keep coming back every Friday. And thank you for watching. Um, we've been like super thrilled that people actually care. And <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, I'm gonna, like, that's awesome. one of the next couple of weeks, I'll make um, what we call, what Dave Arnold calls, because that's where I got the recipe, uh, gin and juice, which is a carbonated grapefruit juice and gin, and it's yeah. so good. Um, yeah. So that one's coming. Yes, grapefruit is in season, obviously, December, yeah. so... Yeah, I just started seeing the first... I saw the first really nice ones today, mm -hmm. but it takes a little preparation to do it, so I didn't, I didn't grab them. But. Maybe next week. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm going to do something with ginger next week, too, because that's definitely a sort of wintery kind of uh, deal with uh, gin. Um, oh, and interestingly enough, um, I was doing... I set up for um, just to take some photographs for Instagram, and so I took the bottle and I just surrounded it with all the different botanicals, the 10 different botanicals that we have, in the gin and after I was cleaning up you know I couldn't get everything because they were sort of interspersed so I just sort of put them all together and I decided to make a simple syrup a botanical simple syrup with the 10 different botanicals and it actually worked out quite nicely and the thing about simple syrup or honey syrup is you can put any kind of flavor that you want to in there if you you know you feel like you need some ginger in your life or some lemongrass or what have you um, go for it just uh, play around with uh, one part sugar or honey to one part water and then boil up and steep your favorite uh, botanical that you want. So there we are. Okay, let's That's have it. a cheers. Um, happy Friday. Cheers to the weekend. Cheers. 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 Happy mm -hmm. Friday. Yep. Cheers everyone. Mm. Mm. Yeah, you can taste the pear. Good. Cheers. Mm. Signing off. Mm -hmm. Adios.